Hello, just Jamie here. So if you're not yet liked and subscribe, like and subscribe and make sure to check out my other content on emulation based videos. I also do lots of music, 1980s, 1990s, play a bit of guitar. And if you need extra help on today's video or any other video, check out my Patreon, also linked in my description. So today I'm talking about Atari ST. So uh, what was Atari ST? It was a 16-bit microcomputer in the 1980s. And it was a rival computer, I suppose, against Commodore Amiga. Um, I'm not going to tell you which one I prefer to be, as that could open up a whole tin of worms. Uh, just like today, you've got the PlayStation and Xbox battle, whereas back in those days, you had the Atari and the Commodore battle. So let's crack on with this. So first things first, you're going to need a copy of MU Toss. Uh, MU Toss, it's a operating system which works with Hattori. Hattori is going to be the emulator I'm going to be using for today's tutorial, which has been around for a very long time. Another good thing with MU Toss is that you can actually burn this image to a real chip to use an Atari ST. It's got many different purposes, so it's a great, great uh, piece of operating system software. Uh, so let's just go to Hattori and grab a copy of this program. So uh, I'll leave the link in the description for this one. Uh, so if we just go here to official downloads, Atari Download Center, and if you just scroll to the bottom, which the latest version of this recording is 2.4.1, just download that and obviously this video was for Windows. I'm going to grab the Windows 64-bit zip. So this uh, is going to download it almost like a portable uh, version. It's not an installer, uh, but a portable version which is just going to be inside a folder. Uh, so literally everything for this program, games, apps, anything, images, everything goes into the folder you create say on your desktop or wherever you choose to put this so i'm going to just go to winrar if you're using 7-zip or winzip then uh, it extracts this to wherever you desire and i'm going to just delete this one uh, secondly, as I was just discussing at the uh, beginnings of this video, you're also going to need a copy of MUTOS to make this work. Uh, link in the description again. So if we just go to the download tab on the MUTOS website and download the latest version. Uh, so Hattori it does come with an operating system, but it doesn't work too well and it has uh, issues with some software. So for best compatibility with everything, uh, MUTOS is your uh, software to go for to use with Hattori. So again, never a zip file, we're just going to open this up and just go directly into this folder. And the version I'm going to be using is obviously a British version or a UK version. So if I just scroll down to near the bottom there, third up from the bottom is ETOS 512 UK. And I'm going to just drag that onto my desktop and close this down. And of course, uh, I'm going to drag this into my new folder. And inside the new folder, I'm going to drag this into the Atari folder. Uh, like I say, everything needs to be put into one folder to make things easier, a lot easier. So first things first then, uh, we need to open up the exe.exe .exe, uh, applications. And from here, all you're going to do, uh, once this loads up, you're going to be presented with a window. If you go into the ROM folder, and mine's already been done uh, to test this out before posting this video, I'm going to go to Browse, and this is going to document every file in that Atari ST folder. And I'm going to just grab myself the ETOS 512, double left click on it, or single left click, OK and back to main menu and I recommend saving everything. So the next part you got is obviously you're going to want to run games with this thing. So Hattori works and it's compatible with .st and .stx files. So make sure you've got some of those games and they're pretty easy to obtain online. Uh, so to load a game all you're going to do is just navigate to floppy disks 
and you've got two drives here uh, so obviously if it's a single uh, disk game image you've got then firstly put into drive A if you've got two disks for a game then obviously drive A and then disk 2 goes into drive B uh, for this game it's a single disk so I'm going to just go to browse on drive A and I'm going to just scroll down or it's at the top there 1943.st ok and back to main menu uh, now from here to boot up the game all we are going to do is press ok and make sure uh, no reset there is checked and it's just saying to us to apply the changes And there we have it, so from this screen if we go back to F12 we have several options here, how to enhance the look of this, how to add joysticks, uh, mess around with screen settings, uh, you can change the machine itself, uh, as you might be aware we have the ST, we have the STE and we have the Falcon, so everything uh, can be change within system options say you've got a game which was exclusive for the Falcon model then you would just go down to select the Falcon and you'd obviously need a compatible game to go with that uh, you've also got two options here to change the screen from TV style to VGA to RGB to mono uh, currently it was on TV I believe so if I just change that to VGA if I go back and if I save Remember, it's very important you save everything with this emulator. And there we go, so we got more of a clear screen. And if I go back to pressing F12 again, which brings up this menu, I can go to Atari screen, and I've there got lots of different options once again. But your main focus on your visuals is going to be the Atari screen itself. Like I said, you've got a choice of different styles of how this looks. You can also change uh, the size of the screen from full screen to smaller window size screens. So lots of different options there to play with. Some of these options are going to require you to restart the emulator. And to configure your joysticks, uh, it's just simply a case of going to the joysticks option and configuring from there. Um, generally it should pick up your joystick your controller automatically so that's no problem and before I end this video just be sure to save your configuration and if you've got any questions uh, for additional support on this please check out my patreon and again like and subscribe I hope you enjoyed and learned something from this video today take care